weapon of the United States, which affected the course of World War II. This Henderson native graduated from Western with a bachelor's degree in chemistry. He was inducted into the Plastics Hall of Fame in 1994, one of only 87 people who have ever, been who have ever received this honor. Our fourth inductee, Charles Clyder. Most people have heard of World War II heroes, George Patton and Douglas MacArthur, but Charles Clyderer could have had more to do with an Allied victory than anyone. This is the proximity fuse invented by Charles Clyderer. Put this on a missile, fire it, and it will explode within a predetermined distance from the target. You set a timer on the fuses, and you can miss the target, or you could set it too early and it wouldn't it would fire before the proximity fuse was a two-way receiving and radio i think it's in the report there <clears throat> and when he got to within 200 yards of the target it would blow the japs or whoever you were firing at right out of the sky and i'll tell you it was a wonderful feeling if you missed two of them in a, in a row i'll tell you Clyderer was in his 20s when he made the fuse. That's a lot of pressure on a young man, especially when you've got Franklin Roosevelt breathing down your neck. He said, well, we got a problem. So he said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, the, the sun sh sends off the radiation from one to the other and builds up the resistance, and it fires prematurely. He said, well, what are you doing about it? Well, I said, he says, Clyder is working on it. <clears throat> he said, where is he? I'm here. <laughs> so he said, come up. He says, what's wrong with it, young fella? I said, well, we've tried everything so far that we know about. He said, well, you better try some more. And he says, I want an answer in 48 hours. Clyderer and associates now knew the fuse had to be right. The president was in on it, so they went back to work. And it worked. So, sure, I call him the next day, and gosh, the call went right straight through. He says, well, what is it, Charlie? I said, it worked. He says, okay, you're in production. No material could withstand the force exerted when the shell was fired. So he invented a plastic called Clyderite, and that got him into the Plastics Hall of Fame. After Clyderer graduated from Western in 1937 with a chemistry degree, he went to work for Sunbeam Electric, knowing little of his future successes. I had to test 20 refrigerators a day with a pad of butter. And I, after the day was over, I had to um, um, sample the butter, write up a report, and if any one of those didn't smell right or didn't taste right, they tore it down, started over again. And I did have a few. After the war, Clyderer became the vice president of Brillhart Plastics and later president of Penn Plastics Corporation. Prior to retirement, he served as the executive vice president for Shaw Plastics. Those positions meant a little extra something to Clyderer, considering he came to Western in 1934 with only a shirt, a pair of pants, and a pair of shoes. Finally found a job that, uh, that helped me a little bit, you know. To, and back in those days, you could get a meal ticket for $2 for a week. And the uh, only thing you didn't get was only two meals on Sunday, and they gave you an apple. He did not spend all his time in the chemistry lab. The old red barn played a role in Clatterer's stay on the hill. He was a cheerleader for E.A. Diddle's basketball team. I wanted to go to the football game, I wanted to go to the basketball game and um, a little lighter than I am today. And uh, surprisingly, I got to be cheerleader, and, uh, which helped me. But um, it's not like it is today. You didn't have to go through all the acrobats and everything. If you could holler, and I was on the farm ho hollering at pigs all the time, you know, so I didn't have any trouble hollering. Clyderer explains what the spirit makes the master means to him. And it's just exactly what it says just exactly you can't you can't turn it around you can't turn it upside down it's the, it's the spirit and that's what the school had 1996 hall of distinguished alumni honoree charles clyderer
That's what it pays to be short, you know. <laughs> I've had that problem all my life. <laughs> I want to thank the committee, president, president of the alumni, and all the people who have entered into this beautiful operation. I appreciate it from the down deep in my heart. It's been a wonderful day today. There are things that I'd like to say. My mother used to tell me, I'll wear the big hat. And she did. Anytime I got out of line, she would call me in Washington and tell me, watch it, Charlie. And then when she really got mad at me, I was Charles William. <laughs> there were so many things that happened that when you look back at some of the things, I was in the right place at the right time. I had my problems here at Western. Dr. McNally, who was head of uh, chemistry department, had a little more faith in me than I had in myself. And Dr. Skinner was organic. I never could balance those equations. I had all kind of problems. But as I said yesterday in a meeting here with the fellows in the chemistry department, we talked about plastics. And I just wanted to thank everybody here for a splendid, wonderful meeting. I also like to thank the people who I worked with and who worked with me on the Proximity Fuse program. It was a confidential secret project. They went on for a good many years. And in accepting the award, 50 years makes a big difference. You don't remember a lot of the people. Some, yes. And I'd just like to take this time to tell you that it's beautiful to accept this award. I cherish it. And in behalf of the people that I work with, I will keep it for them also. Thank you very much.